as we all know, sometimes God brings people into your life for seasons, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody who you meet or you have a relationship with someone who's supposed to actually become like a long life friend or, you know, someone that you're supposed to go into business with. Some people are are there for a purpose and, and you discovering that purpose is you seeking the Lord on what that purpose is, right? And God will show you. So I wouldn't be so explicit to go to someone unless I know for sure that this is what our relationship is supposed to be. So like Nicole said, the only time that I feel like I've really made an effort maybe to start a conversation with someone or to, you know, think of a, a potentially like mutually beneficial relationship is when it's come to business, where we might be working within the same industry, the same field. And I think, okay, well, this person does this, I do this, like maybe we should um, explore this. But I don't think it would go as deep as to friendship. Um, and I think there's a level of, of discernment that you have to use to be able to gauge whether that person feels the same before mm. you actually say, hey, let's take this further. Because personally, if someone said that to me and I didn't feel the same, I wouldn't know how to respond to it. And I don't know how to do that whole, you know, oh, you know, that's great. I honestly wouldn't be like that because if I don't want to be your friend, I can't force it. I don't want to be. Esther knows me already. I'm really like, even when it comes to communication in general, like I'm really terrible with my own friends. So for someone who is trying to build this, this friendship with me and I'm not feeling it, you're probably not going to get any responses from me. Um, but like, that Sorry, I can imagine someone's going to come take the courage and say, Rose, like, I would really like to be your friend. And you're like, Oh, <laughs> okay. no, but do you know? Do you know what it is? I think it's. I think it's because like, where from the context he was speaking is mm. of an already established friendship. Is an a, a, not okay? Maybe not friendship, but a, a relationship. He said, mm. right? It's somebody that he already knows. So, like, let's say for example, we've all met through this women's empowerment group. We've all had, um, you know, conversations here and there, whether it's within the group chat or we've gone out somewhere. For example, Penny and I met in person at the, the dinner we had and we had a conversation, you know, we built a rapport. So if Penny was to approach me to say, oh, Rose, you know, we've had a few conversations and blah, 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 blah. And it would be, it would definitely be organic because there's something that's already happened prior to that that mm. would let that would that would show me that okay, yeah, I can see why Penny would feel that way. The same way that I mentioned to you, Esther, like there was somebody else within the group that I've had so many conversations with outside of the group that I would be very happy to build a relationship with. Um, so it has to be, it has to be mutual. It can't be a matter of that person feeling like it would be beneficial for the both of us I have to feel that as well and I have to be in a place where I know that I can actually give you that friendship that you want from me whatever it is that you feel like would be beneficial to you I have to be in a place where I know that I can give that to you it can't be forced right because if you then try to force it it's not going to be organic and then that's where whatever foundation you might have established prior might get ruptured um, so you have to be very careful with just putting things like that on the table. So I'm leaning more towards letting things happen naturally. Um, but like Nicole said, you allow things to happen naturally, but maybe you just put in a bit more effort with, you know, oh, there's this event that I came across like I've, you know, I know that you like so-and-so's music like would you like to come with me or you know what are you doing on this day or if we have a group event like should we go together so that person would clearly see that there's there's a level of effort being put into it but I don't think I personally would be so explicit but I could understand in the right context why someone might I hope I've made sense you have Rose can I can I can I expose you you did say you didn't mention it but I don't know if if Penny caught it you were saying so I oh can expose you, yes, you what is this? <laughs> so um Rose sent me an audio and was like oh you know I really think me and Penny <laughs> could be friends. I'm laughing because of her face really why did you keep that quiet that's that's annoying <laughs> sorry you should have said why did you keep that quiet? Do you know what? Who, me? Oh, Esther. 
Oh no! Do you know oh. what we we were having? A, I can't remember what we were talking about. We were having no, we were talking friendship. about friendship, right? And I was saying to Esther, like with me in general, I've with the people that I'm really close with. The way that we became friends is just so weird. It's never been a matter of me like approaching them or we've just become friends, maybe like through mutual friends. So in general, I'm not very good with making friends. Like that's something I recognize. And because I'm not good with making friends, like prior to me being saved, especially, I didn't like people. So it's like I could come across people that were cool, but it was never enough for me to actually want to talk to you. Like I didn't like the idea of talking to people. I was very like socially awkward as well, um, very socially anxious. So the idea of making new friends and having people that, are expecting me to call them and text them it genuinely scared me but I think where I am now in my walk I understand the importance of community and people right so I think the conversation that we were having I was saying to Esther that you know I'm a lot more aware now when I meet people that I think would actually be really great friends and so I mentioned you and I don't know what Esther's like goal is here, what she's trying to achieve. I'm just but... saying, you said um, Penny and Tenny. Oh, Penny and Tenny, yeah. You said, yeah, oh. Yeah, I, said, I like really you. like Penny and Tenny because we've had like a few conversations here and there and just their opinions on stuff, you know. So it's, it's like completely different to what this guy's describing, right? Um, and I think this is a good thing that you brought up actually because we can use this as an example is it's never a thing where it's like okay this would be mutually beneficial sometimes you see really good like character traits in people and you know you might have conversations where you you learn more about their morals and their values and you understand that okay this is actually someone who's got a good character um so I think if you are thinking about telling someone that I think this relationship would be mutually beneficial for us it shouldn't just be about what you can give to each other, you know, tangible things. It should be about the person's character. It's like, do you feel like it's mutually beneficial because of your morals and your values? Do you think it's mutually beneficial because, you know, of like where you are in your walk? Like maybe, you know, you can support each other in your faith. So there definitely has to be more than what you can give to each other if you're trying to be someone's friend. So basically, way. Rose, what you're saying is, Penny, could you do like to be my friend? <laughs> Listen, can you imagine? As Nicole said, I would be honest. 